All right, here we are and another year's came and another year's gone. And oftentimes at the first of the year, we kind of, we take time to reflect on on the previous year. And I think there's a lot of benefit in that so we can kind of weigh, um, weigh things out, see where good choices were made, bad choices were made, things of that nature. And uh, really the thing I want to kind of touch on today is facts living a life that's based on on facts versus a life based on your feelings how you you feel or i feel or which is a, a dangerous way to live and uh you know the question is as believers should we continue to compromise facts truth reality the things that are right the walk that is uh, good and pleasing to the lord based on feelings well according to the bible i think that we should really uh be careful about letting our feelings be the guiding force in our life because reality is what it is truth is what it is regardless of how one feels you can feel great you can feel like you could fly it doesn't change the truth that if you launch yourself off of a high place that gravity will quickly show you that reality and truth trumps your feelings every single time and there's a a huge uh, temptation to do that, to, to let our feelings be how we judge what is right and wrong, whether it's a burning in our bosom or being respect of persons or, or making one compromise after another compromise for the sake of unity, the sake of fellowship. The world has this grand push that reality somehow changes based on how we feel. Christians, sadly, unfortunately, seem to be jumping on board with this carnal mentality, hand over fist. And one truth about maturity is that one learns very quickly after they begin to mature that there's right, there's wrong, there's what must be, uh, regardless of, of how one feels. And this comes with skill, experience, one bridling their, their feelings and pushing to do what's right regardless if every feeling within them is to the contrary, right is right, wrong is wrong, deadly is deadly, regardless of how we feel about it. Feelings are subjective to the individual. Using a ruler such as that is one that our, our flesh loves for us to use to measure things because it's very self-serving. And it's set, the standard is set by each individual. It's not an objective truth. It's where people do what is right in their own eyes based on how they feel and they interpret their reality. It causes us to be respecters of persons, like I said. It causes us to ignore that which we absolutely concretely know is true and right and we'll end up compromising at every turn far too often it is very tempting to jump on the uss kumbaya and just go along to get along for the sake of so-called unity and to even box up what is right 
put it on a shelf and forget about it just to avoid confrontation with someone else because we may like them a lot. We may enjoy their company and you, I don't see that anywhere in scripture that that's how we should approach our lives. But I do believe that's exactly what the devil wants us to do is to leave truth where it changes for the individual. Where I believe God shows us that he wants us to learn truth, apply truth, practice truth, grow, exercise our senses to discern that which is good and evil. Truth practice changes people. You accept it, you practice it, it changes you as you discern what is good and evil. You can exercise more and more and grow. Truth that is followed bears fruit. That which is sown brings forth its own. And compromise is a trap that leaves us chasing our tails because we can't grow. We cannot learn how to walk better. We don't learn godly ways on how to be holy. And this compromising um, message has been used by the devil time and time again to trap a believer in a spiritual diaper. Reality is what it is, period. Learning to bridle our feelings is very important. Learning to take control of them so that they don't control us. You'll see this even in the, the concept of fasting where you feel like you're starving to death, where you feel like you're gonna faint, when in reality, your body's just craving food out of habit and such like, and this can apply to anything like that. We need to walk for the purpose of growing. The gospel is our foundation, but it's not the end of our walk. It's, just, it's the beginning. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the beginning of our walk. And it should always stay the foundation, and then we build upon it. We should be seeking growth, and those who also are seeking to grow which will bring about growth all the way around mature believers. If we stay with carnal, baby, compromising Christians, or if we are one, or Christians that are liars and untrustworthy, if we stay with Christians who are you know, make excuses for Christians who are alcoholics, drunks, uh, drug addicts, womanizers, woman beaters, loud and boisterous, prideful, and, and they refuse to humble themselves. Those that have no structure or seek, have no desire to seek structure or boundaries. This kills growth in them and in us, and often causes one to actually regress or backslide to become even more worldly, more carnal, more compromising, more liberal in their thought and theology and practice. And doing this is exactly, exactly what Satan wants for you, for me, for all Christians. It leaves us being ineffective Christians. Mature Christians are effective, fruitful Christians. Carnal Christians, if we stay that, we will not be effective. We will not be fruitful. He wants us to be ineffective. He wants us to compromise and sow discord. He wants us to lie. He wants us to be untrustworthy. He wants he wants these things. He wants us to be hypocrites. He wants us where our word 
has absolutely no influence, no weight in the eyes of those that we try to share the testimony of Jesus Christ with. Being an adult, being an adult believer, being an adult in the practical world means making tough and often unpleasant choices that go completely contrary to our feelings. And it means us not being yanked around brutishly or animalistically by how we just might feel that moment. People go to work when they feel bad. People take care of their kids when they feel bad. People take care of others when they feel bad. They harvest food when they don't feel like it. They refrain from partaking in things even though a part of them feels they should. They stay sober to keep a clear mind, reason, logic, judgment, even though everything about them feels like drowning reality in alcohol, drugs, noise, some kind of influence that can help them to ignore what is real because it's much, much easier. Those that care about you are the ones that have tried to correct you with God's word. They've spoke the truth in love. And according to God, an open rebuke, an open correction is better than a secret love. And that's Proverbs 27, 5. To take time to try to correct someone is superior than a secret love. Faithful, trustworthy are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses that which feels good, the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. A big part of love is doing what's right. It's doing what's right for the other person. What's right, period, regardless, regardless of how you feel. Ephesians 4.15 says we're to speak the truth in love. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Once you're born into this world, ideally you grow. When you're spiritually reborn and you've placed your trust in Jesus Christ and him alone, the expectation is to grow. To learn what is right. To practice what is right. To do what is right. Feelings are not the priority. Feelings change. Many people take medication after medication after medication after alcohol after medication to alter their feelings. To keep from having to do the hard work of prayer, the hard work of bringing their body into subjection to do the hard work of discerning what they should do. It's easier to just medicate. Diverse weights and diverse measures, an unbalanced scale. Both of them are a like abomination to the Lord. Even a child is known by his doings. Whether his work be pure and whether it be right, their feelings aren't the scale. God desires his children to do what he tells them to do. Objectively, obediently, based on the fundamental first step because he said so. If you don't understand why he said so, that's irrelevant. Do it because he said so. That's objective. 
subjective is, well, when I feel like it, maybe I'll do it. And those that are have reached any level of maturity, any level of wisdom, your words may cause feelings in them. It very well might. It doesn't in, in all of us in one degree or another. But when the dust settles and the feelings subside and the reasoning has taken place, a person with any level of wisdom will appreciate the rebuke, appreciate the constructive criticism, and they may even love you more. Proverbs 9.8 Proverbs 13, 1 says that a wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not a rebuke. They will not hearken to correction. And oftentimes you can quickly learn if you're dealing with somebody that's mature on some level or very mature because of their reaction will help uh, determine their way of thinking. It's better to hear the rebuke of the wise. You see how much God speaks of correction, 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 because he wants what's better. It's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. And there's plenty of foolish songs being sung today with every excuse for every possible carnal activity we could dream up. Is all sin? Sin, absolutely. So many times I've heard, all sin is sin. There ain't no difference. Is that true? All crimes are criminal, but are some worse. It's pretty easy, and it's not a hard idea to understand. Someone stealing an apple off a tree without permission does not equal someone stealing your car or someone attempting to physically harm you. They are both criminal. They are both sinful. But reason, logic, common sense, and scales show you some sins are worse. And some sins bring about destruction more severe. As well as some faster than others. Proverbs 12.22 says that lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly or truthfully are his delight. God desires us to do what's right, to speak honest things, to be trustworthy. Why do we know we're going to heaven? Because God is trustworthy and we're trusting what he said. How can we know that we'll be resurrected one day because he said so? Not because of how we feel. Because he said so. So get around people that care about these types of concepts. Desire to grow. Be fundamental in your thinking. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone. It's not of our, ourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. There's your foundation. Now we get in God's word. We stare into that mirror so that it can show us where we need to change and how we need to change, what we need to change, how we need to walk, how we need to think, how to restrain our feelings, how to be content. 
how to have virtue, and all these things. I've seen fellowship after fellowship destroyed by those who do not hold a high reverence for God's word. Who don't set any standards. Who don't seek to grow. Who love drama. Who love chaos. They love discord. Whether they're Christians or not, any Christian can be subject to be one of these people. And at any given time, there's a chance that we very well were or are one of these people. Thankfully, salvation has nothing to do with our works and how we are in those type of things. But your testimony, your fruitfulness, whether you're a vessel of honor, vessel of dishonor, whether you're a vessel that brings shame upon the family name of Christ, this absolutely, absolutely matters. I have a relative. I remember them talking to me. They were bartending. They were actually a bartender. <clears throat> and the group that bothered this person the most and was the most shameful was those that would sit around the bar, drinking, getting drunk, getting sloppy, slurring, all this stuff, and then trying to talk about the Bible. It was just appalling to this person, the hypocrisy, the, the lack of self-control, there isn't a higher expectation for God's children. The world has some excuses on how they act. They don't have an objective path to follow. They don't have an objective ruler to measure every aspect of their life. They don't have the light of God's word shining before their feet. We do. The fact that we can't walk it absolutely perfectly is no excuse for not trying to grow, to do better, to think, to reason our way through this world. To try and be a vessel that brings fruit and honor and pleasing uh, events to our Heavenly Father. So these are just some thoughts that I wanted to share because there's a lot of things coming up, a lot of concern with the way people are, are handling things, basing it on their feelings. They're not consistent. No desire or little desire to grow. And there'll be no changing of the gospel to say that these people aren't saved. But it's concerning that with the knowledge that we have before us, that we don't seek to, to utilize it, to benefit from it, to grow with it, to share it with others. And we'll even yoke up with people with any kind of doctrine half the time and make excuse after excuse after excuse of why we do it. When the Bible shows us doctrine is foundational, and then even the practice of our lives, if a person goes over certain lines, car you know, in carnal behavior that were to separate, even from brothers and sisters in Christ, until that person gets a handle gets in line with God's word. And we'll do all these things for the sake of unity because it feels better to feel like you fit in a crowd where you can gig on laugh and all this uh, type of, of 
you know, mindset. So it's a new year. Let's take time to reflect our choices over the last year. What did they produce? Did they produce growth? Discord? Did they trap us in some kind of carnal mindset? Did it bring us closer to the Lord? Did it help us to grow up? To be able to digest strong meat? Or did it cause us to go into the, the little kid's room and sit down with nothing but soft applesauce and chew it over and over and over and over and over again? Because we were unwilling to step out of the carnal mind, the kumbaya mentality, and, and try to grow. Weigh those things. See what seed was sown in your walk in the previous year. And be honest with it. Measuring it by God's word. What did it bring forth? What did it profit others? How did it honor God?